On January 12th, Chris Barrett, game director Bungie, tweeted the following. Destiny 2 needs more weapons that matter, both in power and the hunt to acquire them. Exotics need to live up to their name. The most skillful or visceral weapons, like snipers, shotguns, and fusion rifles, need to return to glory. We're on it. Now this tweet has led the community to start speculating this could mean that the weapons mentioned, the sniper, shotguns, and fusions, could potentially be returning to the energy slot, or more accurately, we would be seeing the return of the primary special and heavy system that so many people want to see return. Now while I never like to get my hopes up, I will say there is potential, at least for some sort of change. That being said, when I saw this tweet in true me fashion, I decided to go out of my way to do an unnecessary amount of math to prove some point that for the first time that I've done something like this, someone might have might have asked. I wanted to know the answer to the question, should snipers be power weapons? Now I know almost anyone watching this video right now jumped the gun and said a collective no, they should not be power weapons. But before we say yes or no, let's look into the numbers and how I got to them. In order to test this, I needed a lot of weapons that were tested in identical situations on the same enemy in the same area with roughly the same power level. Ultimately, I decided to do the following. Every weapon would be tested on Mercury, always killing the same group of Vex. Every weapon would be tested at optimal range, giving them all a fair chance to prevent range from coming into play. Simply put, I barrel stuffed every goblin I could find. Rally Barricade would be assumed, giving every weapon a normalized reload time for the sake of not only my own insanity so I didn't have to go through and record and count frames for every single weapon I tested, but also again to give all weapons a fair chance. Seeing as every class has access to an instant reload, I really didn't see the need to calculate reload times. So when it came to calculating a simulated best case scenario, a one second reload time was assumed for every single weapon. RPM was determined by trusting Bungie that the numbers on the weapon cards were in fact accurate. Both body and precision shots were calculated, but the graphs that will be shown in this video will only show body shots, except for the snipers which will eventually show both. And finally, all weapons used the default perk setup, meaning the top perk was chosen for all perk columns to maintain a balance, which is the first time in Destiny 2 history that someone wasn't complaining about the static perk rolls and found them beneficial. Now I'm certain a lot of people can find holes in how I tested things. I'm also certain that people will complain that I did these tests in PvE. If you feel strongly about this, feel free to use what I found and the numbers that I found and do test yourself and when private matches eventually get added to the game, you can test these numbers in PvP as well. However, I feel that these numbers are accurate enough to prove the point I'm going to make. When it came to selection, I tested a total of 20 kinetic weapons, 20 energy weapons, and 6 snipers. Now, I also tested some shotguns, fusions, grenade launchers, swords, and rocket launchers, but they seem to be a lot more potent than the snipers, and I personally feel they are where they should be in the power slot. People will disagree, but that's not the topic here. It should also be noted that these weapons were not selected or catered to prove some point. The weapons were purely pulled from the vault at random. So with all those clarifications out of the way, let's dive into this. To start off, looking at kinetic weapons, they range from doing 10,000 damage in 27 seconds to doing well over 15,000 damage in about 15 seconds. To further simplify, about 370 to 1,000 damage per second when you account for that one second reload. Another important thing that I noticed when crunching the numbers that will come into play as we look at the energy weapons and snipers later in the video is the very distinct three clusters, or as I'm calling them, tiers of kinetic weapons. Even though these weapons were selected at random, they clearly have three tiers that the weapons fall into. For simplicity's sake, I labeled these as Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. Tier 1 weapons fall in between 690 damage per second and 770 damage per second. Tier 2 weapons fall in between 550 damage and 640 damage per second. And Tier 3 weapons fall between 370 and 460 damage per second. This information may seem useless right now, but once we look at energy weapons and power weapons, and even more specifically the snipers, this information will make a lot more sense. It should also be pointed out that the Better Devils is an incredible oddball and outshines everything. Let's look at energy weapons. Energy weapons should look familiar. Once again, we still have three clusters, and those overall range from 330 to 750 damage per second. When looking at Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3, we've got Tier 1 energy weapons ranging from 650 to 750 damage per second, Tier 2 ranging from 500 to 540 damage per second, and Tier 3 ranging from 330 to 390 damage per second. What makes this interesting is when we look at both kinetic and energy weapons at the same time, 
What occurs is the gap between tier 1 and tier 2 kinetics is filled by tier 1 energy weapons. The same happens for the gap between tier 2 and tier 3 kinetics. It's filled by tier 2 energy weapons. And then tier 3 energy weapon sits at the bottom, but not by much. And actually, this makes complete sense. It makes energy weapons overall slightly weaker than kinetics, but puts it on an equal playing field due to the ability to do extra damage to shields. Now, a lot of people would argue that the sandbox is in a really bad place, and I can agree that it needs tweaking, but at the very least, it's at least at a good starting point. But we all know that's not why you're here. You want to know if snipers should be power weapons. And I'm going to answer that question right now and say maybe, leaning more towards no. Let's look as to why. This is the singular cluster of snipers I tested. Now I know I didn't test every sniper, but I didn't need to, these few snipers answered the question. When looking at it by itself, it seems pretty normal, but once we add the two other weapon types of the weapons to the graph, you'll notice that snipers are barely better than that of what we called tier 1 kinetic weapons earlier in the video. And right here, I could argue that this proves that snipers shouldn't be power weapons, but we forgot one thing. As I stated earlier in the video, precision damage was calculated, but these graphs don't show precision damage, at least for the kinetic and energy weapons. But let's add precision damage to the mix for the snipers. Instantly, you can now see how much better snipers are compared to all other weapons. They clearly skyrocket off the charts, and because of this, I could now argue that snipers should be power weapons. And this is why I said maybe. However, there's an argument I'm going to make. The main difference shown here is skill. In order to accomplish this drastic of a difference, we are comparing 3 to 5 body shots in the time span of about 3 seconds to 3 to 5 headshots in the same time frame, about 3 seconds. I really want to drive that home. That is 3 to 5 headshots with a sniper in Destiny in about 3 seconds, and that is the difference between a sniper being just barely better than a kinetic and being drastically better than a kinetic. The reason I'm really wanting to drive this home is because this massive skill gap between body shots and precision shots is not only locked behind, well, as I said, skill, but in PvP, the skill wall is also locked behind a box that has a timer on it that you have to fight for, and if you die after getting that box, well, tough luck, because you just lost the ammo needed to showcase that skill. At the end of the day, you could argue they need to stay where they are in the power slot. But you could also argue that skill shouldn't be limited by time-gated boxes in PvP and random enemy spawns in PvE. I'm leaning towards they need to be moved to the energy slot, but I'm going to let you guys analyze these graphs and make the decision for yourself. Now, I may not be a PvP player, but there are some very good PvP players out there. And I don't think it's fair to lock their skill behind a box that only 1 out of 8 people are going to get, and when you add 6v6, 1 out of 12 people are going to get. Let those players showcase their skill because that's what it is. It's skill. It shouldn't be locked behind a box. But like I said, you guys make the decision. I'm leaning more towards they need to be moved. Also guys, this video took quite a long time to make, so if you found it useful or informative or simply enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe. I also appreciate it if you shared this video around with your friends and clan mates or whoever, or don't. I just appreciate the fact that you're watching the entire video. Join the Multilux community discord, follow me on Twitter, come by the YouTube live streams that have no schedule and just kind of happen. Do all the normal things that you would do at an end at the end of the video because I told you to do them. But with all that said, I'm gonna get out of here. Say my name is Matt and I'll see you guys next time.